Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have some Dollar Tree neutral spring DIYs for you. And it's also in collaboration with a bunch of other amazing creators here on YouTube. So after the first DIY, we will get into all that. But with all that being said, let's jump right into today's DIYs. Okay friends, so we're gonna start off with the little barn doors. I take these galvanized metal decor pieces from Dollar Tree and I just start by taking off the jute hanger and then I go in with a small screwdriver. I believe I got this little set from Walmart for fairly inexpensive and I just remove the screws from the back. That is what is holding the little decor pieces off on in the front so i just remove the screws i always save little tiny screws like this because i can use them on so many different things so it's up to you if you want to save them but i'm pretty sure many of you are like me and you save everything so then i got a little bit smarter and i was like okay well i think i have a drill bit that will fit these tiny ones and i did so i did just use my drill for the rest of them Next, I take a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree as well, and I just kind of lay my pieces out. Now, you guys, I tried to go back to my Dollar Tree and get four more of these galvanized signs because I did want these to be a little bit longer, but I couldn't find them, so I just had to go with it. If you guys can find more, I looked online. They're not there either, so hopefully you guys have some of these i'm the type of person when i see something i grab a bunch of them because i know i probably won't see them again and i lay my galvanized pieces out and then measure i mark it with my pencil and then i cut that out with a knife Next, I glue my pieces down to this foam board, and I forgot to mention that I did cut two pieces the exact same of the foam core board. So at first, I started gluing the galvanized piece and then laying it on to the foam board, but I quickly realized that with metal or glass, anything like that, your hot glue dries really, really quick. I guess because it's so cold so I did end up start just I did start uh, gluing straight to the foam board rather than on the metal pieces and then to the board and I found that they held much better this way I do repeat this step all the way down and I do alternate my pieces that way they fit together really nicely I just found that they laid more flat that way and you couldn't really tell other than a few places that it was just one whole piece or that it was individual pieces <laughs> Next, I go in with my lightweight spackling because these have holes where the little sign was hanging as well as the jute hanger. I didn't want those holes showing, so I did just fill them in and then I went over the whole went over the lightweight spackling with my Arteza silver acrylic paint. Next, I take these little pieces that I got from Home Depot. Usually, I use yardsticks but you guys these are called poplar and they're only like a dollar and some change they're very lightweight and they're already sanded down i don't like to use the belt sander it just freaks me out i don't know why so if my husband isn't home i have to wait for him to get there and all that so i figured i would just pick these up like i said they're cheap and that way if he's not there then i can just use them instead because on the yardsticks the numbers are kind of printed on or 
like pressed into it so if I don't sand it then I can see the numbers and my OCD goes a little nuts with that but anyway I measured out the frame and then I use large stir sticks to measure a middle piece for the door and then the top and the bottom like slanted pieces for the barn door. I just lay them out and I take my pencil and literally just draw where I need to cut. Once I have all my pieces cut, then I do go in with my Kona stain that I got from Walmart. I like to use this because it dries really, really quickly. Any other stain that I use that's just regular stain that isn't water-based takes forever to dry, but because this has polyurethane in it, it dries really quickly. I then just glue my pieces down starting with the bottom and then I just reinforce that with some Jenga pieces in the back and then I continue around the entire piece gluing all the pieces down. Once I had all my pieces glued down then I take my white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush and I just distress around all the edges all the wood pieces now i know that this is a personal preference i know that distressing is not all of your favorite so if you don't like the distressing you don't have to do it but for me personally i do love distressing so that is why i distressed my piece so i thought that i had a clip of the next part but i don't all i did was take a handle from home depot two handles and i screwed them in I had very small screws so that they wouldn't go all the way through. I distressed the handles as well. And then look at these, you guys. I am so excited with the way they turned out. I do wish they were a little bit longer, but they will do. I love them so much. And I know you'll let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. So if you're new here, my name is Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love if you would become part of the family. You just wanna click that red subscribe button and then tap the bell right next to it and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload. So today is the Fab Four and Friends collab. So me, Shayna from Robison Repurposing, Savannah from Savvy Crafts with Savannah, and Camaro from Dying to DIY all came together to put on a collab for you guys. And then we all chose somebody to DIY with the rest of us. So I will have everybody's links down below. They're all amazing creators. I know that all of you guys will love them as much as I do. So make sure to check their information out down in the description box. Also, if you're not following me on Instagram, I love to get a little bit more personal over there. And I also have two Facebook groups and you guys can come over there, chat with me there as well. I would love to have you guys. All that information is in the description box as well. Last but not least, I want to show you guys the earrings of the week. Each week, I thought that it would be fun to have a new pair of earrings and show you guys just for something fun and different. And once again, I got these from Walmart. You guys, I really don't have many other stores in my area. So I also love their selection of earrings anyway, and I don't really get to wear them that often. So I'm glad that I get to show you and wear them here. So anyway, they're just these, they're just these fun little gold number. They have a cute little design on them. And then these black hanging tassels, which if you guys have been around, you know that I love black. I wear black all the time. I just love it. And I'm trying to venture out and do a little bit more color. So anyway, with all that being said, let's jump right back into today's DIYs. Okay friends, so moving on to the bigger middle wall hanging. Now I take those same exact poplar sticks. I believe they are four feet long and I originally cut my pieces down 
36 or 32 inches but I quickly realized that that was just too big for me so I did cut them down to 25 and then the pieces where the side pieces met you just have to measure because you want this square so you want to cut them a little bit shorter but just measure them all together and then you'll cut wherever it ends up being 25 inches I stained the pieces and then I glued them in the back with some large popsicle sticks once it was dry then I did lay it on my floor because like I said this was a really big piece and I take my square dowels and I just lay them out in a V and then mark where I need to cut I go to my little mini miter saw and I just cut down those pieces but I quickly realized that it was much easier to use my miter shears they're handheld and I can easily just um, you know get the angles that I need and then it literally cuts through these like butter next I leave the that first V in place and then I lay out another square dowel I mark where that needs to be cut and then in the middle I mark that as well and cut those down this was really simple to put together and I'm so excited with the way it turned out I kind of wish that I would have used my bigger dowels but hey next time I'll know I then just sand down the edges and then I stain those as well with my Kona stain now last week I got this, ama this amazing floral from Walmart. You guys, I love their floral. It's so bushy and cheap. These were both 97 cents a piece. One is a boxwood and I forget the other one, but I did show a picture of the uh, label in case you guys want to try to find them. They're really beautiful for spring, but I just kind of pulled them off of the pick and I cut the boxwood down and then I just put those in a wreath from Dollar Tree. This has jute holding together the wreath. So I just kind of slid the boxwood pieces around the wreath through those. And then for the flower ones, I believe these are called hop clover but don't quote me on that so for these i did end up just gluing them in because i couldn't slide them through i made the wreath pretty bushy so i did just glue those in pretty close together and i do go all in one direction some people don't like that but me personally i like when they go all in one direction and then i take a big n from walmart and i paint it white and then distress it with some antique wax I also distress it with this green by Waverly chalk paint I believe it's called moss and then after that was all said and done then I did end up going in with some black just to make it stand out even more Next, I take it to my other part of my floor in my shed where there is no carpet and I glue the X pieces on. I then take the N and I glue that down to my wreath. I just put a little dab of hot glue in each corner and then lay that down. Now once I glued this down, I wanted the greenery to look like it was kind of growing over that end. So I did just pull the flowers and the greenery up over the sides just so that way, like I said, it looked like it was growing over it. And I love the way this look, but if you don't like that look, then you can just leave your letter right on top of it. It's totally up to you. I then just wanted to reinforce these X pieces, so I flipped it over and took some hot glue. Now I use Gorilla Hot Glue because it literally holds so many things and it holds really nicely. So I did just reinforce where all the wood pieces met. Now I usually distress with a chip brush, but I saw this technique on Facebook and basically you just take a sponge from Dollar Tree cut in fours, some antique or Waverly white paint as well as Waverly wax, and then you just kind of dip it in both, dab off the excess and then distress that way. And I am so impressed with the results and I actually really love this technique. 
I then just glued the wreath to the middle and then that was it you guys this project was really quick easy and cheap and I absolutely love the way it turned out so let me know in the comments what you guys think Each week, I love to thank my coffee supporters. So thank you, Liz, two times anonymous, Kat and Donna, for buying me a coffee. If you enjoy my work and would like to buy me a coffee, you can find the link in the description box or go to buymeacoffee.com slash allthingscrafty. Moving on to our last project, which I think might be my favorite, but per usual, I can never choose. I did just go on my computer and print out fresh flower. Originally, I was going to do market, but it wasn't going to fit with the wording that I put at the bottom. And I just went, I'll leave all the information. I would leave you guys a free printable, but it would literally be like 10 links because this was so big and so many different pages. So literally all I did was go on my computer, type it out and print it out. So I will leave the size and the font. I just take two signs from Dollar Tree, the longer ones. I take off all the embellishments and hangers. And then I do just peel that paper off that was the design and I glue it together with some popsicle sticks and then I fill in the cracks with my lightweight spackling. Next I go in with my mini finger sander which is linked in my Amazon store in the description box as well and I just sand down those edges and then I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and give it a distressed coat of paint. Next, I take my Arteza graphite paper and I just transfer on my wording and then once I am done transferring it on with the graphite paper, then I do go in with my Arteza black paint pen and I go over all that wording. Next, I was not sure what I was going to put on the side of these, you guys, but I did have these spring uh, chalk transfers from Chalk Couture. I will also leave a link for everything that I used as far as Chalk Couture in the description box as well. Anything that I use that you're wondering where I get, chances are you will find it in the description box. So I chose to do this eucalyptus piece. I did use this in my previous video a few videos back and I just love the way this eucalyptus looks. So I did use two types of green and uh, two types of green and I kind of mixed it. I like the way that this looks, but if you don't like the two-tone look then you can just do a solid color and I just kind of place them down I dried in between the next part and then I just kind of made like a swag on each side once I had that done then there was this little um, piece that kind of looked like little pieces of greenery and I did go in with my shimmer olive and I transferred those on just to make it look a bit more full once I had those done, then I go in with, I, I believe this is like a rose, and it is a two-toned transfer. I love that about Chalk Couture is they give you pieces so that it, you can have dimension, but I did want this to be neutral, so I used very neutral colors. So I did the first part with like a tan color, and then I went in with the rose part with black. Next, I'm going to transfer on a peony, and I did go in with peachy keen and some white in a little dish that I got from Dollar Tree, and I didn't want this to be as bright as the peachy keen, so I did just mix it. You can mix your paste, it's totally fine, and get the color that you desire, and as soon as I got the color that I wanted, then I transferred on that peony on either side of the roses. 
Now, I did tone it down way too much. It was almost white and you could barely see it. So I did just go back in and add more of that peachy keen and I got this really beautiful pale pink color and I am so excited with the way that it turned out. So I did just go over that first one with the darker color that I made. I did the exact same thing on the other side, except I only had to do one coat since I didn't transfer on the lighter color yet. Now, when I stood back and looked at this, um, I couldn't really see the little details of the peony, so I did just go in with some black acrylic paint and a very tiny brush, and I just kind of highlighted the edges and the details on the inside of the flower. So this sign is absolutely beautiful as is, but if you've been around, then you guys know that I'm extra. So I did just go in with a tiny brush again and some white Waverly really chalk paint. And I just put a line on the outer edge of the letters just to give it some dimension and make it look more professional and finished and high end and you guys I love the way that it looks with these lines I was really nervous to mess it up but I'm so glad that I just went with it because the way it turned out it looks so nice Next, I measure out the frame. Now, obviously you can't put the frame directly on the sign and I've never done a frame on the outer edge of the signs before. So I was really excited to try this. So I just take some more of my square dowels. Now you have to get the 48 inch, which is four feet and it fit this sign perfectly on the top and bottom so I didn't have to cut the top and bottom pieces but for the side pieces I just laid them out measured and then cut those down as well once again I stained them with my Kona stain and then while that was drying I took my distressing ink that I got from Amazon it is in my Amazon store as well in the description box and my blending brush and I just randomly go around the edges and in the middle just to make this look old and weathered and kind of antique-y I just love the way that that like kind of antiquing looks again if that's not up your alley then you don't have to do that originally i was going to distress it with antique wax but once i was done with the distressing ink i loved the way that it looked and i didn't want to mess with it any further but originally i tried to uh, glue the frame down just by putting a bead of hot glue on the top but I quickly realized that that was not gonna work. So over the weekend, I picked up this magical tape. It's called Alien Tape, and it's supposed to hold a bunch of stuff. So I did just put a B, I did just put a piece, good Lord, here we go. I did just put a piece on each of the dowel rods in the back and then I reinforced the other edges with some hot glue and it did hold together really beautifully so I was definitely excited about that my husband said that I should have let him cut little divots into my dowels on his table saw but honestly by this point I was just ready to be done so I did go with the tape and the glue and then I distressed the dowels with some white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush. Look how amazing this sign is, you guys. I think this is my first runner up for my favorite project this week. But like I said before, I can never choose a favorite, but I know you'll let me know in the comments which is your favorite. That is it for this video, you guys. Don't forget to check out the links in my description box for the other people joining me in this collab. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Let's try to get this video to 3,000 likes. Do you guys think we can do it? I think we can do it. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, I see that like 60% of you watch and you're not subscribed. So you might as well click that red subscribe button. Become part of the family so you don't miss another Dollar Tree moment. And also, if you could share this with your family and friends, 
and like I said give it a thumbs up because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. If nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning, you are worthy, and I love you with all my heart and soul, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!